Oh, now we're live? You're supposed to give me the countdown. <laughs> Crap. You always... <laughs> no. Bad sheep. Okay. Bad. <laughs> bad. Bad beep beep. <laughs> Welcome bad to For Media, beep. folks, where we provide a voice and a social connection with furries around the world. My name's Space, and I'm joined by my lovely host, Punya, where we have nothing go wrong from any technical viewpoint. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to be live again. Oh, look, there's so many people in chat now. Hooray. There's 11 watching now. Um, so you guys can see everything on my screen, and I do a lot of different things when I'm doing the show um, behind the scenes. You get to see all my fun little antics. Um, tonight's show... I'm so excited for it because it's one thing that I've always wanted to talk about because, you know, you always have those stupid customers that or those phone calls on the call center that come in and you're just like, really? Did you really just say that? Or did you really just do this? What? And, you know, you're just frustrated or you just want to say, you know, you want to say something, but you know, they'll get fired if you say it. So uh, tonight is called Retail Tainment, which is basically um, an extension of what I see or Eyeshadow already does on YouTube in general. She has a mini series called Retail Tainment, and then that's when she talks about terrible customers and her fursuit, and they're actually quite funny. Um, so now we're doing a, a bigger live version, and we've asked you, the watchers, to send in your stories if you've ever worked in retail, so that'd be like call centers you could work in a uh, service anywhere that you're like one-on-one -on -one with a person either on the phone or in person and you have to sell them something that's where we want to hear the stories because you always get those weird ones you always get like the weird the scary the frustrating and the elderly that's a whole different topic right there the elderly they're just crazy i'm just gonna say that i'm not gonna <laughs> use my swear word just yet um, and so we've gone across the different links. I've got some on Facebook. I need to go pull up my fur affinity here and have that ready to go. Um, now I was just talking with Punya. I was like, Hey, you know, you've worked in the retail business, but as you said, that's your cue. It hasn't, I haven't had any like crazy experiences. <laughs> I just and I, I find that I'm, so hard to believe. I'm kind of bummed about it, actually. <laughs> Probably my, my SFW filter on <laughs> before <laughs> before I just stream what's well, on my that end. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, maybe. Uh, okay, I gotta go to. That would be terrible. <laughs> They'd be like, wait, why is the intro playing again? This doesn't make sense. Um, so I've sent you guys to multiple different areas. You had a chance to email in your stories. You could have commented on for Affinity, which I'll share the link real quick into the chat if you have something you want to share. And also on Facebook as well. And then, of course, if you found me on Telegram, you could have also sent it there. Um, I work in the service industry. I've worked in the service industry now for about 13, 14 years. Ugh, that's what I say to that. <laughs> I'll probably be in it for a little bit longer, yeah. Um, and so the first six and a half years was working for one of those like fun parks. where you, They're like, oh, they're called like family fun centers in California. And here they call them different things. Um, <clears throat> and I worked mainly in the office. So I took care of like a lot of phone calls and you would not believe half the phone calls that would come in would just be so odd. Like, and I'll go into details about those ones in a little bit. Um, and then the rest of my career was working for one of those. It's kind of like a Whole Foods grocery line, but like 10 times better. But that's only located in Utah. And the brand is called Harmon's. And so that's a really nice, like, all the stores are super nice. And all the employees are... Well, I say like most of them are pretty nice. <laughs> it just depends on what day you go and you see them. Um, <clears throat> we should be nice all the way across the board. 
but you know, sometimes you're not. Um, <laughs> I hope they don't see this. <laughs> They'd be like, what is this? <laughs> like, I didn't say names. Traitor. I didn't say names. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so so with Harmons, I am a cheesemonger, and I'm a lead monger, so basically I'm a manager. I manage all the different products on my island, and then I also oversee one employee who's my assistant, and then I also oversee uh, kind of like half of the department of the delicatessen, but it's more or less like I get the sales from it. Um, I don't necessarily like deal with the employees, though I am uh, I'm pretty harsh when it comes to rules. I'm like, don't break the rules. Online, I don't care. In person, don't break the rules. <laughs> it's like the, it's like a totally different thing. Um, because if you break the rules, things will happen. Like you can get cut, you can get in big trouble. There's always like health department and stuff. Which our store, by the way, I just want to say we're not held at a state health level. We're held at a federal level. So that's like double the the intensity of trying to learn all these different um, like temperature holdings and then you got to go and you got to go like one step higher and it makes it just so much worse and so at first it's really intimidating and now i'm just like oh whatever um like, imagine how you'd feel if the police came at your door now yeah. imagine how you'd feel if the fbi was at your door <laughs> exactly so it's like so now you know you have like that kind of like thing going so you have all these like different things running through your brain you have those on like on hold and you have all this product on hold and you so at any given time, a customer comes up to you and you just have to be able to be like, snap and then go straight for it and be hopefully that you can answer their question. And a lot of the times you get really stupid questions, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. So I've, I've had like hundreds of stories, but I only want to share a few because some of them are appropriate and some of the other ones definitely are not appropriate um, <laughs> it's just you know certain things you get you know you get like customers that let you into their personal life and it's like you know there are some things I don't want to know about you and I definitely want did not want to know that you know and it's just sometimes they're like really private stories just behind the bedroom door stories you guys know what I'm going at like NSFW and you just hear this you're just like oh my god did that customer really just say that? I'm not going to be able to look at this customer ever the same. Like, um, I have one that comes in and I've now associate her with a naughty toy store or a oh naughty sex shop. Cause that's all she's like, Oh yeah, I use this on my husband and I use that on my husband. And the best place to go is the counter that has the black blanket over it because you know, that's all the good stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> um, did you want to buy any cheese today? <laughs> it's so, so every time she comes in, I'm just like, uh, <laughs> like, oh God, I'm just here like, she comes, here she comes. <laughs> here she go. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like, you know, <laughs> plugs and, you know, wands, all these, like, I won't say the, like, what they're for. you guys could Google it yourselves. And if you're young, don't Google it at all until you're 16 or 18. Basically, um, this, this woman has no filter. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Absolutely. She has no filter. It's the worst. Uh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun though. Like it, as, as, um, as odd as those situations are, they're actually quite fun. Cause then you can retell the story over and over and over again. And it gets a lot, it gets more fun that way. Um, so I got to go find my post. I do have quick. a couple posts or two, a couple stories too that, uh, all right. Why don't you go first while I go, uh, round up some posts here and some well, stories. Right. Fine. The whatever. open. All right. Uh, so this one. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna read the um the less intense one and save the other one for later. Okay. Um. So this was a story that was uh sent into us from Jack the Coombro. Actually, these are both from Jack the Coombro. Um. You just say it's your fiance. It, well, yeah, I know, but. <laughs> it's all the same okay <laughs> my fiance um, okay. <laughs> alright so there was a time where he was working at Lowe's um, in the paint department and uh, they were having a sale on paint samples like the little little tiny quart sized cans um, they were on sale for, for two dollars a piece which is pretty good for paint samples um so he said this this guy came in 
and asked for 30 of these little sample cans to be tinted all the same color because they were trying to save money on paint. So, let's hmm. see. They, they would have spent $60. The thing is, though, is that the, sample, the paint used in the samples is really cheap and not good for full coverage. Um, so, he said it took over 30 minutes for them to tint all of these samples by hand while still dealing with other customers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> the thing is, it's like, why, I understand your logic of trying to save money, but you could have easily just bought one gallon for 30 bucks and saved half of what you just spent. <laughs> but people aren't, that's the thing, though, is like, customers just don't think. They sales only make just... people, sales make <sighs> people lose their minds. <laughs> I know, and I, I'm a firm believer, and I, I definitely fall into this category at least, mm, we'll say at least like a good third of the time that I go shopping, because I know that we all fit into this one particular category. Would you agree that people lose all common sense once they enter an area of retail shopping? I think so. Depressingly, okay. yes. Yeah, so... I, I, I definitely believe that's a true statement. And I, I know for a fact that like sometimes I'll be shopping. And I'm like, oh, duh, that's where it goes. And I'll, I'll ask like a, I'll ask an employee like, oh, my God, you know, I've been looking for this forever and I cannot find it. And they're just like, it's right there. And I'm like, oh, I'm so frustrated right now. I don't know why I had to ask you that. It was right in front of my face. I feel so stupid. And, you know, the cut like the employee is just like. Oh my god, I hate this guy so much. <laughs> so, so we all lose a common sense and then you just have to deal with it. Oh, well, my my take on it is and I had to point this out to my roommate uh one year at college cuz she her mom would send us coupons, you know, to try to help us save money on groceries and stuff. But it was coupons for things that we didn't really use. And while we were saving money using the coupons, we were actually spending more because we didn't really necessarily need what the coupons were oh, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> so it's like, do I save two dollars on something that costs twenty, or do I save twenty bucks and not buy it at all? <laughs> well, and that's how I—I I think it was until Curtis pointed out to me. Sorry, Felix, that's his name. <laughs> you now know my husband's real name. Um, <laughs> so Felix pointed out, and he's like, because uh, with our with our Harmons, we have like all the employees have like what they call a foodie club card. It's basically just your average rewards program. But you can go on and load all these coupons, and then you basically can use them. But the coupons are always for the really expensive stuff. So it's like, what's the point of using the coupon if I can just get another item that's like at least 50 cents, if not a dollar cheaper, and it's the same thing? Why do I need a coupon that's going to like really not do much for me? Right. But that's where companies are hoping that they get you because they make you think, oh, you need this coupon for this name brand item because nothing else will compare. And then you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you save, but sometimes you actually end up spending more, which I just, it's, it's stupid. Um, let's see, I've got a story. This was actually, this is probably one of my, are you done with the story? Or can I go? Oh, to yeah. Yeah, that okay. was it. Okay, so I have this um I have this story from a person. You'll actually see it's right on the screen here. Um, and it's just so perfect because I know I've had moments like this, not like this, but like if you were to take it to like a grocery setting, I just, I totally know how this person feels. But um, this comes from a person named ssj 3 mu 2 It took me a second to figure out what the heck their icon was and I had to zoom into it and then I'm like, oh, it's Mewtwo. Okay. Um <laughs> So they said, um, I work as a server in the fine dining restaurant business. Fine dining meaning like upscale like, as in it takes money to get a meal there. <laughs> okay, so we're talking like a like a like a four star like a like a like a four star Chevron kind of like a restaurant. Um, let's see, meaning you think that the people going there wouldn't be idiots or walk around in their own little world, and would retain a grasp of how things work. Wrong. Beautiful Sunday brunch service. I'm working outside patio tables. This place is right next to the river in Washington, D.C., so it has a gorgeous view. It's a fun fact. 
Helicopters are required to follow the river as their main flight path to cut down on the risk of them crisscrossing and crashing over the city itself. So if you're outside, you're probably going to have one or two fly by while you're eating your meal. This is where it gets really good. This caused one lady some consternation. When a police chopper went past, she waved me over to her table. The server. Yes, ma'am. The lady. My friends and I are trying to have a conversation, and these helicopters keep making so much noise that it's impossible. Can the man- management do anything about it? <laughs> and, uh, and in his head, he's like, does it look like I'm packing a stinger in this uniform? No. <laughs> it's, so it's like you always get those stupid customers that are just like, oh, I want you to take care of this. And it's like. You want me to get like a flare gun and like shoot up in the sky? Is that what you want me to do? Because I'm not really sure how you're supposed to handle this. <laughs> it's just there. There are so many like entitled customers out there or patrons that just think that like, oh, oh, hey, there's a plane flying over. Can you get onto traffic control and tell them to go a different route? Because it's really messing up my party outside. You That's know, it's like- just. It's like calling the Coast Guard and being like, look, we really, really want to go swimming in the ocean, but could you please do something about these sharks? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, Or it's, you know, calling the Coast Guard and be like, can you move your ships because we're really trying to enjoy the sunset and your ship is in the way <laughs> and it's really just messing everything up. <laughs> you have those people and it's just, oh, it drives me up the wall. Um, oh, yeah, that was it's, it's so priceless. Um, let me go find an. Another story here. Or I'll just substitute the words. I'm not cutting in and out. I'm good. Maybe. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Um, am I better now? Mm-hmm. Okay, I just because I moved my that's <laughs> because I moved my <laughs> microphone like right on top of my mouth. Okay, um, so from Kyle Craig, I work in eight McDonald's locations simultaneously. Okay, that that can just tell you right there, McDonald's. Just imagine the worst now. I was recently working in the center of the ghetto on closing. A guy walks up to my counter at maybe. About nine at night with a pie he had just bought from the Walmart and requested a fork and a knife before pulling the pie out of the box and placing it on my counter. He then, what is that? He then proto, let's see. And he then proceeded to try and order whipped cream like it was a thing on the menu. Oh my (laughs) God. I told him no, but he persisted until I finally said, screw it and shot some cream on his pie. He then went and ate the whole entire thing on his own in the lobby before yelling, peace and God bless, and leaving the store. (laughs) What the heck? Man just wanted some whipped cream, that's all. (laughs) It doesn't work like that. (laughs) It doesn't. It just doesn't work. Um, He says, I have tons of other hilarious stories, but that one definitely stands out. But there was also a time where a lady tried to walk her massive dog through the drive-thru, and then we were told um, told her that you couldn't do that. And she tried to bring it into the restaurant. This is a health code violation. She then proceeded to get angry with me until another customer offered to hold her dog just so that she'd shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it, this is – and this is a true, true thing, folks. Um, dogs or animals aren't allowed inside of, um, like – fresh foods, grocery stores, or restaurants, unless it's a service animal. Now, from what I understand, you can ask if this is a service animal, and then the handler can say yes or no. And if they say yes, you can't ask him any other further questions. But if they say no, then you can ask him to take their dog out. But then again, you know, this is where people are super smart. They say yes, and then we can't bother them. And it's like, I can guarantee you that giant fat little dog there is not a service animal. Mostly because you're just dragging it on the ground. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, or the time where I asked my manager how to go about cleaning up vomit, and he said, with a broom. <laughs> so, so gross. <laughs> we have, I know for a fact that we have, um, we, we literally have boxes of kitty litter that we use because kitty litter is the best thing to soak up all liquids with, and then you could literally just sweep it up. Um, 
I got another one from a person. And then do you have another story you wanted to share? Um, I guess I could. Sh- it's not really like super intense, but I could share the one that I, the only one I can think of that was like, oh, why at work? <laughs> Just go for it. Then. All right. Um, I went into work. This is when I was working at Walmart um, in the deli. And you guys probably know that the deli and the bakery are usually right next to each other. Um, so it's kind of a shared area. Um, but anyway, I went in normal shift and about a couple hours in, I started to feel nauseous, like, like really sick. And I was like, something's not right. I, I must've eaten something bad. I just don't feel good. So periodically through the day as I'm trying to, you know, just basically be alive behind the counter I'm running back and forth to the bathroom trying to like see if I'm going to throw up or anything nothing happens so finally um, Joe comes to visit me on our break and he brings me some uh, of those Pepto-Bismol tablets oh, no. um, so I took a couple of those and hoped that help and I had like 10 minutes left before I had to before I left for my lunch break. So he goes and waits for me over in the sitting area. And um, I'm talking to one of the ladies in the bakery. Who's like I'll watch the counter for you. If you need to run to the bathroom or whatever. And I'm like thank you. That's very helpful. So I start to walk off. And I take like 10 steps out of the deli. And all of a sudden it's just that feeling where it's like distortion and sounds are like and you're like oh my god here it comes <laughs> oh no Did you so throw I, up? I I 180 and I walked back into the bakery and I looked right at the girl who said she was going to help me and I just said I don't think I'm going to make it and then as soon as I said that like vomit just came flying out of my mouth oh that's so <laughs> gross but the thing is is I had just Check taken those vomited. I had just taken those Pepto. I was luckily I was right next to a trash can, so like the first the first wave came, and then I was able to get everything else. Um, I had just taken those Pepto Bismol tablets, so it was like a rainbow of pink, of like bubblegum pink, just everywhere. Oh, <laughs> that's gross. So, yeah, so I had to sit there and wait for maintenance, and then wait for management, and I look like ghostly pale i look like death and then everybody comes is like huddled around me like staring at me i'm like oh my god i'm so embarrassed so <laughs> and then finally they sent me home but oh, it was just one of those things that came out of the blue and i had no control over it and it was terrible <laughs> that's gross <laughs> that's that's gotta be the worst um <laughs> oh man vomiting too oh and you know that you just you do not feel good, and you you know like maybe whoever saw it, they're just like, oh my god, I'm terrified. Uh, I hate throw up. It's the one thing. It's like it's instant gag reflex. Mm-hmm. We've had oh, what was it? Was that the first store that I was working at? The bigger store, much bigger store. So they're like a ground level, and then they had like a top level dining area and stuff. It was just to the nines. But there was a part is like my second year as a cheesemonger, and I had a another assistant with me and I was assistant at the time and uh, we were getting ready to close. And there is this kid, like there's always like moms, like the, the father is never there. It's always like soccer moms. And then like they're 10 children Um, and they're just running around creating havoc. Well, there's this one mom and like, she's got like a baby in her hands. And then she's got like um, one of those grocery carts that has like the car thingy on the front and the kids sitting there. One of the kids gets out and runs over to this olive bar. <laughs> oh, no. It's so bad. My mom's like, don't touch that. And he's like, I just want to try. She's like, don't touch it. And he puts it in his mouth anyways. Puts an olive in his mouth. And no joke. It was just like, <laughs> like he oh, just my threw God. up all over the place. And I'm just like, ah! <laughs> like I can't do this. And I, my literally olives. Just, like, I literally just like froze there. And he's like, I'm hungry now. Can we get chicken tenders? And I'm like, what the oh. fuck are you doing to your kids? And so um, 
So, like, I, I call for maintenance. I'm like, we need maintenance. This kid just, like, totally projectiled all over the floor. And they're like, can't you clean it up? And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not touching that. And uh, <laughs> maintenance comes over. And we have this giant, like, island and, and kind of, like, right by the delicatessen. And I'm in the corner just sitting, like, curled up. And I'm like, I don't want to see it. If I see it, I will throw up. <laughs> so they're like, you got to help him. And I'm like, I'm not helping that. Did you see what's on the ground? Chunks, man. That's not natural. That's all chicken noodle soup all over the floor. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you know what? I just thought of one. Another story. Very minor, though. And it was another Walmart story. <laughs> Big surprise. Walmart stories are the best. Heck yeah. Um, so I'm behind the counter doing my deli thing. This lady comes up in a cart with a cart and two kids. Uh, one of the kids is riding in the cart. The other's walking next to her. Um, and I just take care of her order and we're just talking politely back and forth. And then after I hand her, her, uh, her order, she looks at me and says, Oh, could you call maintenance for me? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure. Is there a spill somewhere? And she's like, yeah, my son had an accident. And I look over the counter and the kids sitting in the cart literally just peed everywhere. Oh, <laughs> Why? I don't know, but she brought it up just so nonchalantly, just like, oh, and by the way, you know, no warning, no nothing, no heads up, just, yeah, he peed. And then they just walked away. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm like, oh my God, really? <laughs> that bad. That's bad news bears right there. But what's funny, too, is that she didn't say anything to her kid about it. You know, I, I mean, I'm not expecting her to to beat her child but it was like this is, was a totally normal thing for them <laughs> my, my child just pees wherever he wants it's fine well, and it's walmart too like i mean what what can you expect you've got like no offense people you can call walmart like you can cover that thing with diamonds and make it look beautiful inside but the bottom line is is they suck and like the whole environment of walmart is just terrible and so you will see the worst of people at that store, just on a given basis. It, it, it's inevitable. It's, it's almost as bad as like standing behind the coupon lady who pulls out her giant file. And it's like I got coupons for everything, and you know, and she's like just pulling things out, and just you know, you're gonna sit there for two hours because there's no other cashier available because they've all gone unhidden or <laughs> gone on lunch out, out of nowhere. I hate those. Those are the worst. Not dealing with coupons. <laughs> God, you know, the, there should be like a. Like a rule, like if you have more than five coupons, then you have to like go to a special lane where it's it's um, it's specially designed to make the customer look even worse than they are now. So the people can be like, oh, look, that person has to go to that line because I got 20 coupons or, or you something. Know what? Make a list. And when you get the things that you need, pull out the coupons for it before you get into line. Yeah. Get them all to them at once. Done. Or just make them load it onto, like, Walmart, get a card. Just get, a like, a coupon card, hand it out to everyone, and then say, go home. You have to add the coupons onto this card, and if you give it to us physically, no deal. And that would probably make things, That's like, a really hundred times idea. easier. You know, they don't have to do a rewards program. It's just a coupon card. Walmart savings. That's all it is, right? Mm -hmm. And then, beep, that's it. They've got all the coupons they want on there. They don't have to, like cut them out or rip them in such a way and then oh there goes the barcode now i gotta go get another coupon oh god i'm so tired of those people <laughs> um uh, a story from chloe wren um as an artist when you open up for free reads <laughs> most people scatter and grab their references to hurry and then be the first to con or comment at um at slot expecting to do a simple sketch instead of the instead the person asked for an all-out scene between two characters and i was a little frustrated and calmly asked them to choose which character and with one character once again they include a huge scenario that involves the character stumbling drunk and falling out of the bar with plenty more detail um that would only be possible from a huge finished piece it uh, just made me face palm a little um well that one right there that's that's almost um if you're gonna give a freebie you need to d 
detail what the freebie is outlined to be. Because if, if you just vaguely put it out there, people will come out of the woodwork and just go for it. So that almost seems like it's um, user error. Um, another one says, and with fursuit crafts, it was not to me, but I've seen customers who attack their makers. I kid you not. Because their costume was hot and uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> wow are you serious <laughs> I drank this vodka and it made me drunk <laughs> seriously okay while a particularly uncomfortable build might be a maker's fault if they made it too tight or if they made pokey bits these people are upset mostly due to the heat not considering that a fursuit is pretty much a walking shag carpet with a restriction to all your senses and breathing that's so stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> Why? Why would people... I don't understand people sometimes. It's... How do you not know? <laughs> I, I mean, I, you, you can go to a fur con and you literally see people passed out on the floor from heat exhaustion. <laughs> well, they're probably thinking like in their brain, like, oh, they're probably just tired because they've been fursuiting all day. And it's like... Okay, I put my my husband's fursuit over my head. It's freaking hot in there, and it was barely in there for like one minute. How do you not know? Even that's when that's you, sweat coming from your from your head, not droplets of moist water from out of nowhere. <laughs> and even if you're like suiting on a on a cool or even cold day, I mean, you can still sweat your butt off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh imagine what it's like, you know, when it's 70, 80 degrees or more. It's going to be a little uncomfortable and it's very, I think that's one thing that people don't realize is because the whole facade of this adorable character bouncing around, you really have to have a lot of physical stamina to be able to put that up for as long as some people do. Man, I wish I heard, because that would be funny because I'm sure they've got some terrible like customer stories in general. I don't um, believe it. Vez Simpson, not sure if it counts, but I used to do face painting for children on the side. And one day, a kind of odd looking older gent came over to talk to me. He looked a bit scuzzy, told me also, he also did face painting. But there was a major thing that made me question his success. His breath stink of, oh gross, feces um, he wasn't even that close to me. When you're painting, you're right up to someone's grill. That's, I mean, like, gross. He probably didn't brush his teeth or anything. Um, let's see. Oh, well, someone's working, so they didn't have one. I have one. So this literally happened last week. So uh, it, in the grocery business, it's it's a daily thing. Like you know, you're gonna have stories to tell at the end of the day. It's it's inevitable. But um. Last week, I, I remember Bria. So Bria is my assistant. She's the best. <laughs> she's like, she's basically like a copy of Punya. If if I could have Punya work with me, it's basically like Punya. I've heard just, stories about this lady. She's great. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> I love her so much. I don't know what I would do without Bria. But like, sometimes we sit there and we just look at each other like, how? How? <laughs> uh, so she was doing, I think she was either doing, she was packing shreds or she was cutting. And um, I was either uh, getting something ready on my table. And I look over to my left. My island's not that big. If you if you take like maybe like uh, like a king size bed and then you were to kind of put like three feet away from that and kind of make an outline of the bed completely, that's basically the size of my, my island. It's not very big. Um, but there was this older woman, probably like in her 70s and 80s. And I... Uh, I <laughs> I look over and it, it didn't I didn't put two and two together at that moment because sometimes it takes me a second and her pants are kind of like sagging. So, you know, I'm just like thinking in my head, oh, old person, retirement home, maybe the nurse is around here somewhere. I don't know. And we do have an old person home which is down the street. So I just thought, OK, maybe it's just one of those things. And I, I, I kindly like look over and I'm like, hi, how are you doing? She's like, well, my pants are falling down, but otherwise I'm doing good. And she like grabs her pants and like rips them up to like her her belly and starts tying them on. She starts like telling me the story of like, 
you know, like when you get older, you know, things start to sag. And she kind of like puts her hands in a motion, like right up to her breast. And I'm like, <gasps> like just terrified. <laughs> and uh, she just keeps going on and on. I just turn back and I, you know, you can't like she's in her own world, kind of like mumbling at this point. And you can't say anything to them. And um, I just started laughing to myself and I turned to Brie, I'm like, please tell me you, you witnessed that. She's like, I heard you say something, but I have no idea what you said. And I'm like, okay, I got to tell you what just happened. <laughs> I look at the woman, I'm like, so you all good? Do you need any help? She's like, I've got it. I'm a big girl. And I'm just, she just goes walking off and I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? Why did this just happen to me? So so I'm glad nothing else dropped out, though. I mean, because that would have been just the worst. Well, Miss Daisy do it myself. <laughs> and you got like, you know, you got like those like older people. And then you get like the fatties. I've got like, like, the I don't know how to explain it. You know how they have like really, they're kind of like, they're a little skinny towards the waist. And then they have like the big old booty. And then they got big old boobs and everything. Well, this person decided they didn't want to stand up they would rather just push their cart like hunched over so her basically to give you the best impression um imagine two insanely sized water balloons kind of hanging over the front of a cart and then you know just a person pushing that as if it was a struggle to take a step and so this woman goes like oh where's your ice cream at and i'm like it's in the frozen section she's like all the way over there and i'm like well, we also carry it in aisle six, I think. And she's like, thanks. Aisle six is the bread aisle. So <laughs> it's not the aisle for ice cream. And I knew that. <laughs> so She goes and she's like, I don't see it. I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry. You're right. It's all the way down to the other side of the store in the frozen section. You'll find it. She goes down there. And then I come back and this guy, because um, I walk down there, make sure she finds it. And I come back because sometimes if you don't follow the customers, they they'll blame you that you didn't help them. And so it's like, oh, I've already, I already have a couple of strikes against my own name. Like throughout the years of Harmon's, I don't need another strike. So I walk her down, walk her back. And then there's this guy, and, you know, you've got customers and people that they, they say things and they know they said it, but they say it in either a mumbling way. And uh, I didn't hear it. And I've already got bad hearing as it is. So usually my my rule at work and i tell this to everyone i'm like look you can say whatever you want to my face but i may not hear it so i'm going to turn it into what i think you said and i can guarantee you about 98 percent of the time it's going to be wrong so and i i basically do that and so this older man like walks up to me and he's like and i heard like the last part of the of the word and i'm like i'm sorry can you say that again because i i my radio was going off and i couldn't hear it and he's like Where's your soup? You know, soup, S O U P. And I'm like, I know what soup is. Thank you very much. I'm not an old person. I'm like, down on the floor, <laughs> which also was not the soup aisle. So <laughs> it's just totally down somewhere else. Like, don't insult me in my face and think that I don't know what soup or items are because I will just send you down the wrong aisle. Because, you know, I mean, I don't know where everything is. So I guess technically I could say, oh, it's down the, the frozen aisle. I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those things. You get those people all the time, though. And that's the thing. Like, in the service industry, you cannot say anything to the customer. You have to look at my without them really knowing. If I see someone in the store that is totally just a problem person, like they've, they've given me problems in the past or whatever, I will crop dust them and I will not feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will just full on let out a silent but deadly or I'll let out a really nasty wet fart and I'll just let it sink there for a second and then I'll walk away and I'll be <laughs> like, ha, 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 you have to walk through it. <laughs> Suck on that. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> And we have a code for it at work. It's, it's you say ninety two. So like, because all the other numbers are taken together, yeah, like sixty nine and all these other numbers, and so we say ninety two. So I'll be just standing there, and then uh, I'll look up at Brianna. I'm like, "Are you coming out anytime soon?" She's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Okay, well, um, don't come to this area." She's like, "Are you kidding me right now?" So you know, <laughs> just totally cropped us the whole area, or you know, you just take a fart right in the island, and you can't escape it. So that's the best part too. Like even sometimes I'll be like. Oh, great. This is a really bad one. And there's people over here, and I do feel bad now. 
<laughs> like other associates. <laughs> God. Um, oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> yeah, you got to deal with it. Um, another story from Michaela Baca. Let's see. Used to work at Burlington Coat Factory, kind of like a wholesale clothes retailer with surplus brand names um, that got sold to and are hella cheap. Um, it's actually a really cool store. You can get really good stuff. Um, I worked as a floor associate working the women's sportswear, which had the ladies' youth and dresses. A manned, or I manned the dressing room so I could view all the store from one of my corners and take clothes back when people turn them in or from trying them on. Some girl thought about trying on a maxi dress. No, I immediately thought about like maxi pads because I thought that's where <laughs> she was going with that. Um, one of those long floor dragging dresses. She took it off the rack, placed it on her, then kind of just lost interest. She dropped the dress on the floor without even trying to put it back on. Such lazy, arrogant behavior. I had um, cleaned up that area not five minutes ago before she came over and did that. I stared at the floor until she saw me, at which time I eyed the dress on the floor and then her again. She put the dress back up, walked away as if she'd been scalded by her mother and was now grounded. Never forget the look of the sheer embarrassment on her face. My manager high-fived me afterwards, having saw the whole thing. <laughs> wow. That's great. <laughs> do you ever have like a... Um, like, we all have it, what do you call it, the stank eye look? Or if you're just so tired. Like, there are days where I'm just exhausted, and I just don't want to deal with it anymore. And there was a time, I actually got pulled up to the manager's office, like, three weeks later. It was so weird. Um, and I had just, I was done with the day. And I was at a brand new store. Um, this was last year, and it was already stressful as it was, and I just wanted to go home. And this guy, okay, like, I don't even have my chef's coat on anymore i'm not i'm not i'm just in regular clothes he must have known like recognized me from the counter and i'm walking out and he's like sir i need some help with the apples and i basically i was like 10 feet away from him i stop i turn and i give him like this death stare as i'm like i'm gonna throw daggers in your face if you don't shut up kind of like a look <laughs> and he's like never mind and i'm like that's right and i just keep going <laughs> and, then, and then like the manager pulled me up it was actually a store director, and he's like, um, so there was a customer a couple weeks ago who said you looked at them, and then you walked away. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was the guy who was looking for apples. I was having a bad day that day. He's like, okay, yeah, but you can't just, like, stare at them and then walk away. And I'm like, I, d I mean, I looked at him. How do you know what I was what, what I said? Did you pull it up on a camera? So, <laughs> so Did a little, you tell like, him that you were off the clock and, and leaving? <laughs> I hadn't been off the clock yet, so I was heading to the clock out station. Ah, I was just, okay. I was in like I was out of work clothes, so I was basically like just in my pants and then my shirt, and I might have had my beanie on, but at that point, like if someone's out of their coat, that pretty much is an obvious signifier that, that this person's doing something other than work. Don't talk to them. And you know, there was like a dozen other employees around. It just blows my mind that they always stop to ask. It's the weirdest thing. You ask any cheesemonger across the whole company, they always ask us first, as if like we're a beacon of hope that we're gonna know the answer to their question. It's like you might you might as well just put like one of those giant eye, like just like a like an eye that says information on top of our stuff, and then give us a couple more dollars an hour because people come to us first, and they ask the most absurd questions that it's just I don't know the answer to. Um, and it's just stupid. I always get stopped like, where are your bathrooms at? And I'm like, it's right there. There's a giant sign. It says it right there. How did you not <laughs> see it? And then sometimes you got to like, you have to, um, uh, you know, like uh, you kind of have to just play with them a little bit and be like, uh, where are your bathrooms? And I'm like, you know what? They're under construction. They got some uh, honey buckets out in the back. Honey bucket is a porta potty company <laughs> here in Utah. So I mean, look at you with such fear. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, no, they're right there. <laughs> they go over there. They kind of look at you with like the most disdain look. And it's like you just threw poop all over their face. It was, it's just it's sad, but it's funny at the same time. I love it. Um, but that's all the. Well, no, I have other stories. I have mean ones. I have a uh, story. Okay, go for it. Um, this is also a Walmart story. <laughs> it says, um, it was my first day 
starting at Walmart, um, and I worked in the electronics section. I'm walking into the back to clock in for my shift when I overhear somebody say, I have to use my swear for this. Oh, my God. Is is that shit? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, this was coming from a manager. Apparently, apparently somebody had decided to take a big poopy right in the middle of the TV aisle. <laughs> Shut up. Where does anyone have the time and how did someone not see that? I don't know because there's cameras and pe- all over and people walking around incognito. The phantom pooper. But he said, I never saw it, but I walked away to the back room and just and realized just how horrible a place Cleveland can be. <laughs> oh my God. Ew. <laughs> just imagine like walking up and be like, is that a poop emoji or is that real? <laughs> it's like one of those pillows. <laughs> Ew. I mean, Ew. How- who who pissed you off so much that you had to go and take a poop on the floor in a public grocery shop? It probably was a kid. To be honest, because if you think that's just odd, I'll be honest. There is, I'm sure, if anyone else has ever worked in a grocery line, you know you've heard a poop story in your store, and it's true. Every store has had their poop story where someone just goes down and decided to pee on the uh, like cereal. That's a true story. Or poop on the aisle and then just walk away. Yeah, we get it on camera, but it's not like, what are the odds if you see this person again? So kid. it's just sometimes <sighs> kid kid poop stories are ridiculous because it's like, why would you do that? <laughs> or you like you find little brown spots that are just kind of it's like a trail. They're just like, if I find if I follow this trail, it's it's not going to lead to a happy ending. <laughs> You're going to find something much worse at the end. So do you follow the trail or do you just walk to the other direction? <laughs> Man, having having worked in child care for over fifteen years, I could fill a book with poop stories. Oh my god, I thought you I know you could. <sighs> okay. Um let's see. I've got an email from one of our own, um, one of our own staffs, Mothsicles. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so uh, she says, okay, so I'm a fursuit maker, so I already get a lot of people asking me questions that are answered on my website, which is annoying, but this story went beyond that. Someone emailed me with a reference um, of a really complicated angel dragon character with five plus colors on it. Okay, so angel dragons in general, folks, are just ridiculously intricate <laughs> as it is so i can understand where this story might be going i gave them a quote for a full body suit with digital grade um since that's what they asked for they said it was out of their budget and kept trying to haggle me with um which is already rude but then they also kept trying to lower the price by changing the design over and over again using phrases like How much would it be if I took out the thigh markings? Or how much lower if you take the wings and the sleeves out? Oh my god, seriously? Um, To their dismay, they realize that changing little things doesn't change a price much, since you're paying for labor mostly, not for the supplies. I asked to see their driver's license to confirm their age, since they seemed like a really childish thing to do for a fursuit maker. And they ended up actually being around 11 years old. That explains a lot. Wow. <laughs> and that, and then that goes right back around to the really annoying, really a uh, reality of a fursuit maker of people just not reading the websites, uh, frequently asked questions where they would have found that I don't do commissions for minors. Luckily that's the worst retail store I have, which wasn't that bad overall. Just a little kid not knowing any better. I don't know if I would feel comfortable making fursuits for children either because they're still growing. They're not going to fit in those after a couple of years. You'd have to make it like <laughs> spandex so like it could stretch with you or something. The only thing that's appropriate for like minors and or for teenagers, I guess, because they're still growing. I think what you stop at like 18, I think is what I know for men for the cutoff. But you could still probably grow from there. Um, probably the most appropriate thing to do would be a partial. 21? Is it tw- okay, so it's 21. Um, 
And I think a partial would be more appropriate because now that way you can your limbs are still growing and stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you have room for other things. Um, this is another one from our staff. This is the Nitro, and he actually runs our Facebook. So if you ever see questions on there, like, hey, how's your day going or what you doing this weekend? That's Nitro asking those questions, not me. Um, so he's a pretty cool guy. Um, so he says, <clears throat> I was a lifeguard for, uh, for four years. Believe it or not, we have to deal with unruly people, whether it be an parent yelling at you for saving their drowning kid or getting mad because they can't leave their two-year-old unattended in the pool. Anyways, my buddy Mark just got promoted to supervisor for our outside pool for the summer. So I wasn't here for this event. I came in here that day. It was Mark's first day, and the pool started to get busy. And one of the lifeguards spotted these two teenagers with very big beach balls. Not like normal basket-sized ones, but like a ginormous one. Um, We allow beach balls at the pool, but we don't allow the big ones because you can't see around it. And it's a visibility issue. So the lifeguard called the teenagers over and proceeded to tell them, we don't allow those beach balls in the pool. The teenagers were okay with it. And they took the ball out of the pool and just put it over by their mom that was there. Well, would you know the mother was not too pleased that we couldn't play with their precious beach ball? She goes over to one of the lifeguards and asks their supervisor or, or to see their supervisor or manager, which they point over to the manager's office and the woman walks over there. She proceeds to go off on my supervisor, Mark, on his first day. She's freaking out and just cussing at him. The lady said that she is going to sue us. She's going to call her big, tough friends to come over and beat us up. Oh, my God. Like, really? (laughs) Um, She then goes over to the front of the office, cusses them out. Now, keep in mind, her teenagers are with her the entire time, and they look embarrassed as hell. uh, They finally ask her to leave. She goes over, grabs her stuff, and angrily leaves. But it's not over. Um... It's not over. Then, or She then proceeded to get my boss's number, calls him, but he didn't answer, so she left a message and freaks out on him. Then calls his boss um, and goes all the way up the chain to the damn mayor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> After wow. that, they panned her from the local rec centers and pools that are funded by the town. Wow. <laughs> That's just a- <laughs> you do you have these people that just flip out i bet you anything she's got to be all like on some sort of crazy pill or whatever or she missed a <laughs> dose or she didn't have her like afternoon vodka shot <laughs> you have those people i know that you do and they're always like i know the owners and you're just like well what are their names and that doesn't matter i just know who they are and i'm like but you know who they are, but you don't know their names. Like, that doesn't make sense. And I love when you can call them out on that kind of crap and they get so frustrated. But you, you do. You have these, these customers that are like, they won't just stop. Like, they chew out you. They make you feel like crap and they make you cry. You know, and I've done that. We'll go into, like, the, the classic area to go cry is in the fridge because no one really goes in there. And you kind of feel good after you cry because you're all cold. <laughs> um, yeah, it's true though. Like, I walked in. What was that? I walked in. Well, they chew you out. Then they go to... The cashier, they call them CSMs, they're customer, or, or customer service managers. Um, they chew them out. Then they go to the like grocery manager, chew them out. Then they go all the way up and they keep going. They don't stop until someone hands them like a gift card and says, we're sorry for your problem. Like That's, that's how we, we shut people up. It's like, all right, let me give you like uh, $20 credit and maybe that'll make you happy again. And all, uh, it, that's the thing, like with customer service, it's this one line, and this goes across all the way around the board. doesn't matter who you work for, if you're a lifeguard, if you're just a bellman. The customer is always right. And because of that, it doesn't matter if it wasn't your fault, if the customer started it. If the customer is pissed, you are in trouble, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I find that to be the biggest flaw in customer service is going on this rule because then you have people that are under the impression that, well, I'm the customer. I'm right. So you have to do what I say. Otherwise, I you won't get a, have a job. That. And that's that's the, uh, the thinking across the board, no matter where you go in this world. And I really think it would revolutionize the way people shop if we just dropped that type of uh, thing and came up with something else. 
so don't punish your employees, especially if they're not in the wrong. It doesn't make sense to do that. And sometimes, you know, some people don't do that. But really, it's just this, well, I'm the customer and I'm always right. And it's like, you're not right. Um, you are offending so many different things here. But it doesn't matter because it's that one stupid rule that every customer service person holds on to, whether you're your manager or owner of the company, because you know, in the end, that they're going to complain and then it's just going to branch off like wildfire and then you lose customers and people don't want to lose customers. They don't want to lose their money. So they just basically give them gifts to shut them up. But then the customer knows that they can do this over and over again and they take advantage of it. So while this, the idea might've been good at a one point in time, it's not good anymore. It just sucks. If I Um, was a manager of a store, I would be clear cutting all that crap right out the door because <laughs> you know and if i lose customers so what i rather use to lose a few jerks and keep some of the good ones <laughs> yeah so um that's basically the customer service industry in a nutshell there's tons of stories out there if you guys have stories that you wanted to tell that we didn't get to like talk about please email us and we'll put it in our next show or we'll make a little like video about it and we'll kind of answer those emails and talk about that in another little like five minute video. We have hit our time on the show itself and normally we would do a Q&A, but we do have some, um, my producer and then of course um, Punya, they're in Eastern time zone and it is now 11 o'clock their time. So it's late and they probably should go to bed and I should probably go to bed. Um, but I'm gonna we go have to, to be a dull. <laughs> Actually, going to Walmart after this. Put your pajamas on. We're going to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> um, so uh, normally we do a Q and A, but we don't have time to do a Q and A tonight. If you guys want, um, if you if you have questions, please just go ahead and send us a question via like Facebook or Twitter or for Affinity. Telegram's another popular one. Um, that's probably our most active channel. Is Telegram. But also, uh, just to kind of plug this real quick, um, we did have winners from last week's show, and they won some art, and they're almost done, and then I'll be sending those art pieces back out to the winners. And then um, something our producer came up with, which I think is a great idea, fan art. Now, we love fan art, but it comes very randomly. But if you have fan art or you want to create us fan art, we will turn it around and do something better for you, we'll include it into our outros. We already have an intro that shows like that cool like music and stuff. We don't have anything to take us out, but if we get enough fan art like loaded into it and it comes from one of you guys, we'll constantly just change it out and we'll show people like, look, this artist did this for us and we'll basically advertise for you in that last end of the bit and I'll make sure to put your information at the bottom of the information list. Um, so when they go to click on a video, they can look down and be like, oh, that was one of the artists that was featured in the outro. So if you have fan art, it doesn't matter what it is. You could literally just do a stick figure. I think those are fun. Um, you could literally just send one of those in and we'd be more than happy. You can do that via Twitter. You can also do that on Facebook. For Affinity, is a little bit harder. So if you do do that way, load it and then send us a link so that we know. Don't just send us a shout. Like we did gift art. Like it doesn't do me any good. Send me the link like through a personal note or through Telegram itself. And that also helps. Um, I would love to see from some fans is, uh, you know how like people take clips from Game Grumps, sound clips, and they do animations of them? Yeah. I would love to see some clips from some of our shows into like little 30 or 60 second animations. That would be amazing. You know what? And if they did that animation, we would put that at the end of our show and just kind of take it out. That would be so much fun. (laughs) Felix and I, well, we'll watch like game grumps animations every now and then and those are fun to watch because there's just so many of them um so yeah if you guys want to game grump us do it um on our next show how do we want to discuss this we'll let you know (laughs) we'll we'll let you know what our next show we we already know what we're going to be talking about next week um but it's more of a sensitive topic in a way so i will actually make a new video later on this week or next week as an update. And I'll be talking to you about what we will be talking about specifically. Um, But other than that, we're going to leave you with um, a good note. You guys are the best. Holy inception, Batman. There's so much going on on my side of the screen. I'm going (laughs) to stop sharing. So it doesn't pull that up anymore. Um, 
We thank you guys for tuning in every week. It's great. It's good to be back. We get to do shows again. If you have artists that you want us to feature or a guest you want us to have on the show, please throw them our way. And we'd be more than happy to knock on the door and ask them to come onto our show. Um, but other than that, folks, you have a wonderful evening. And thanks for watching. Good night. My head's really hot as if like I have You're a really fever hot. or something.